Hello and welcome. So today we're doing Deadpool in his X-Force colors. We're going to start with Dark Sea Gray, just like we've done with the other two. I want to take just a second out and ask that if you can, if you can like and subscribe to the video, it helps a ton and really helps keep me motivated to do this as there's absolutely no monetary gain for me in any of this. With that said, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is lay down our and just like everything else, the other videos that we've done, this does not have to be a very precise part of the process. Just kind of get it down. Thin it down until it's about the consistency of 2% milk and just lay it over top of everything. Let it dry. Take a look at it. If it looks like you can still see some of your primer through it, hit it with another layer. It's absolutely no problem. If you get it into where we're going to paint it black, it's not going to hurt anything. If you get it on the swords, it's not going to hurt anything. This is absolutely easy peasy. Don't stress yourself out about anything. Keep your paint thin, keep your strokes easy, and just kind of enjoy this part of the process. And next up, probably my favorite color in my entire model color range, German Gray by Vallejo. It's this wonderful soft black, which is a fantastic starting place for pretty much any time I'm doing black and I don't want it to be an absolute black, like when I'm inking lines in between two other colors, which we'll do on this model a little bit later on. It is a wonderful color to work with. It doesn't need a ton of thinning. And it just it just gets the job done. It's a fun color to work with. So now we're going to block out all the parts that we want to be black, which on this model is actually going to be pretty substantial. It's this chest section, and then the sections that go down the sides of his legs, the front panels on his boots, and all of his wraps and the belts and pouches, pouches holding everything of his gear. Alright, so we're going to go back to Dark Sea Gray for a little bit because I'm going to be honest with you. This model presented me with two very irritating problems. It was really hard to hold the model in a way so that I could show you what I was doing. And for the life of me, I could not get the black part of his mask to show in a way that I could see it and be able to work on it. It actually would become a problem throughout this entire process. And once I finished it, and I finished recording and started editing and looking at it for pictures post, 
I would actually get so frustrated with it that I would go back and tidy it up again later. So if you're getting frustrated with Deadpool's mask, you are not alone. It frustrated me too. But we're going to get through it. Have faith. And since we're here, we're going to go ahead and dry brush on some of these areas where the black and gray met and kind of went over each other, just to give us a little better defined lines between the colors. If we're tidying up, we might as well tidy all of it up. All right, now that I'm a little happier with the gray-black situation, we're going to go ahead and get our first wash in the bag. Now, for the sake of making this tutorial accessible to people who have not had a ton of experience, we're not going to get real crazy about how we do all this. We're going to keep it nice and simple, we're going to keep it straightforward, and we're not going to do anything any more complicated than we have to in order to get a really solid piece. Now there are a couple techniques that we can use to take it from tabletop to show worthy, but we're going to focus mainly on getting nice solid basics so that anybody can approach this and walk away happy with their dead one. Remember that as this dries it will cool sometimes, so you want to check on it from time to time, move it around a little bit if it starts to cool. Don't worry too much though because you can always dry brush anywhere it cools too much, it takes too much away from whatever you're doing, it'll fix it, Jimmy quick, no problem. I know I say this a lot, but the secret to understanding how to do this hobby really is, you know, we're going to do something and then we're going to tidy it up, and then we're going to do something and then we're going to tidy it up, and you just keep going back and forth until you get everything exactly the way you want. So this part, we're going to take the ink and we're going to line pretty much everything. This model, because he's got a lot of bracelets and straps, and his boots have straps, and there's so much to do here. So this next part's going to take a little bit. Stay patient, stay slow, remember that it's going to all be worth it. And while, we're, while we've got the ink out, I'm probably going to go ahead and just ink the straps too. Since I've already got this nice liquidy black out, I'm going to go ahead and try and make the most of it. Remember, be patient, don't let it discourage you, you're going to get through it and it's going to look great. Take your time, Line everything the best you can. You got this. Alright, so since this part's going to take a little while, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about while we're finishing this up. And the first thing is, of all the models I've done for Crisis Protocol, this one gave me the most trouble. Which is bizarre because I love this character and I actually like the sculpt. It's just, it's been, it was such a pain in the ass. Unfortunately, it was hard to find a great way to get it on film so you guys can see what we were doing. It's real finicky because of the way that it's sculpted. It just made it more difficult. Having said that, I do still really like the sculpt, and it's still my probably one of my favorite characters that they've done up until this point. The other thing I want to talk to you about is after having finished this that was recorded, I ended up really dissatisfied with it. So I went back and I tidied it up some. And unfortunately I wasn't able to catch that on camera. My camera's battery had long since died and needed to be recharged and I needed to get this model ready for the battle report that it's going to be a part of. So I want to explain to you what I did so that you kind of have some base knowledge. I took the dark sea gray and the german gray and just watered it down a little bit and very carefully painted on top of the muscle. Now normally, in these kind of videos for real early and beginner, I wouldn't do this just because it, it takes a little bit more of an eye to know where to do this than a beginner might have, and it's easy to get carried away with. But I did end up having to do it to fix this model up so that I was happy with it, and I just kind of wanted to explain what happened and how I did it so that you guys have an idea and a reference point to why it looks a little different in the final picture than it does in the final frame. Alright, well that's everything I had for that. The other thing I would say is if you're going to follow along with this tutorial, instead of doing what I did and using the ink for the straps, 
I would go ahead and use German gray for the straps and just paint them the same way you did the black parts. That soft black and it would have ended up being a better choice than the black was for them. I thought I was going to be able to shave some time off of the overall tutorial if I just did it since I already had the ink in hand and the I was doing the strap shadows anyway. But now that I've looked back on it and after having seen how the whole process went, I definitely would recommend that you instead just use the German gray on them. It would have been much easier to deal with in the long run and caused me a lot less headache. All right, so now we're going to use dark sea gray again, and we're going to dry brush and clean up some of that ink, because no matter how good you are at it, you will always end up getting ink where you didn't need to, just the nature of the product. So we're going to go ahead and just tidy that up a little bit. Eventually we'll paint the base gray, so I'm just going to use that to get some of the paint off and see how much is coming off with each stroke. It's easier to add paint than it is to take paint away, so it's better to start with a, low, a very light amount of color that comes off as you dry brush and then add more and more than it is to have too much and then try to go back and rewash it down to get it back to a darker, more subtle color. We're just going to do the same thing we do usually at this stage. We're going to dry brush over all the lines where the ink is. And the addition of the paint on both sides of the ink will make a darker well, so it'll give us more contrast, and more contrast means more depth and a better look for your model. This is a great technique to use in this situation, and because the straps are darker, when you dry brush the skin of the suit underneath them, it's also going to nick the straps, which is going to pretty well highlight both sides of the straps for us as we do the other highlights. So it makes the process a little easier and a little quicker. Now, as you see, you're just gonna kinda go through. You wanna do less in the black than you do in the gray, if you can. So try to focus more of your highlighting in the gray areas than you do in the black. You do wanna get some in the black because it's a, the dark sea gray is a good highlight color for the German gray black, but you don't wanna have too much. Here I'm going to end up not happy with how much I have and I'm going to go back and darken the black up a little bit later, but it's just something to keep in mind as you're going, that the amount of highlight you do, you want to have slightly different amounts for the different colors.
All right, so now we're going to get in and put the little bit of red. And, you know, the little bit of red on these X-Force guys really is so important. It makes such a, a visual contrast against their darker, more muted palette. I am going to talk a little bit of... Uh, about some of the struggles that I had with this model so that if you have them too, you don't feel like it's just you. You know, um, we're gonna get the eye here, and this is all gonna go pretty well. And just like with the saber tooth, you know, you wanna make sure your paint's got about the consistency of 2% milk, it's real important for this part. You're gonna go in and just try to get the eye completely red. Now, because there's a little bit of black around it, you know, we're going to go in and try to touch that up too. So if you get the red outside of the normal where you want it to be, that's fine. Now, this is where I started to really struggle with this model. And I want to take just a second out to explain why. So of all the Crisis Protocol models, the mask on this model has frustrated me more than any single thing I've painted from Crisis Protocol to date. For whatever reason, and it may have been a bad sculpt, they may have chosen a bad head, I, I don't know. But I could not get where I could see the rise of this mask so that I could easily paint it. And I'm assuming because I had this trouble with it that maybe some of you are having this trouble with it and I don't want you to feel like it's just you. We eventually get it and it's going to work out. But if you get frustrated with it, you just know it's not just you. You know, the black plates on his mask, for whatever reason on this particular head, were incredibly difficult to get under control. But the key to this, just like the key to everything else we do, is we're just going to do it, and then we're going to tidy it up, and then we're going to do it, and then we're going to tidy it up. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling some of the ink off of the red, now that I've let the ink sit in there for a moment. And we're just going to keep trying to put a little bit of this. Usually on models like this, I can put the black ink straight onto it. And it gives me a nice solid color with a very thin layer. And it's not a problem. Because ink is pretty much pure pigment, it's usually not a problem as long as there's paint underneath it for the pigment to stick to. But because the ridge between the plate and the mask is so thin on this particular head, it would not hold its shape very well and the pigment would slide off of the mask and then start to bleed into the cloth. Slide off of the plate and bleed into the cloth. So this is going to be the thing about this model that is going to cause me the most trouble. And you know, it may it may be a point for you and, and maybe you'll be lucky and your mask won't have such a, a light contrast in it and you'll be able to do it without a problem. I genuinely hope so. I hope it was just this mask and I was just unlucky. But if you do have this problem, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Now that I'm feeling pretty good about the general shape of the mask, I'm going to put a little bit more red over top of the eyes. We're going to end up having to put a couple layers of red in order to get those eyes back to pop in the way I want them to. But it's going to be alright. We're going to tidy it up. Then we're going to do it again. Then we're going to tidy it up again. We're going to get there. So we're going to go into damage control kind of to get this mask looking right. So the secret to doing this at this point, now that I've identified what the problem is going to be, that I can't see the shape of the mask, is I'm going to take the dark sea gray and I'm going to take it nice and, and well watered and we're basically going to shape the mask. I know there's a ridge there somewhere, I'm just having trouble seeing it. Now on this video you can actually kind of see it better than I can see it in real life. but. What I did is I figured out where I thought it would be, or close to where it would be, and I just added a little bit of the base color again to lighten it up, up to the mask. Now, what you can do in this situation is basically shape where you think the mask should be, and what will happen is as you get to the ridge, as long as you have a little bit of paint, you're not too much, 
you should start to be able to figure out where the ridge is when your paint starts to catch the edge of it. Now I know a lot of tutorials for painting show you the painter coming in doing one small section and then doing the rest of it off camera but I want to show you that it's not always going great and sometimes even you know people who have a lot of experience in this struggle to make certain things work the way that they want them to. I want you to see this because I don't want you to get discouraged when it happens to you and think that it's you or that you know somehow the person that you watched paint this was better than you or that something you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is fine and we all experience exactly the same thing. So I'm going to show you what I struggled with as we put this together so that you can see that you can struggle with it and still succeed and still get a good model at the end. All that said, as you see we've moved on to silver, we're going to get the great down there at the bottom, we're going to get the metal plates on his suit, uh, any of the belt buckles, anything that you think should be silver at this point. We'll get it all done at this stage. All right, so we're going to start with the Everland Sunset for this smoke cloud. Now, the way I like to do my explosion clouds is much darker than a lot of folks. So if you want to make it lighter, do this, but then don't dry brush it with the black. Dry brush it with a much lighter color, and you'll end up with a much lighter explosion color. But I like to do mine in dark colors. This is how we do it here. So we'll put this down as a base, put everything nice and coated in it. Next up we'll take some of the heavy red and we're basically just going to paint in almost some striped patterns. I want to get some of the deeper parts of where the mold for the explosion is. That way when I finish the highlighting for it, there will be some red and some yellow peeking in through the black. Now I also decided that since red fire tends to be less hot than yellow fire, that the fire at the base or the explosion trail at the base would be more red than yellow and there would be more yellow towards the top. With that done, we're going to start with the dry brushing of black, just to get the highest peaks all black. Now, if you want a little bit less black in yours, then just stop the dry brushing shorter than when I do, and you'll have less of the black coloring in it. But I always imagine that these kind of weapons have dark clouds of smoke behind them, not light clouds. And it's just the look that I've kind of I've come to accept and like with these explosions for all these various miniatures. Because it is basically a dry brush, it's little bits of paint, sometimes a little heavier than a normal dry brush, and just back and forth gently over top of the highest points, trying to leave the darkest, deepest points still the original color, and it'll build up, just give it time. Just go back and forth gently and quickly, and it'll build up before you know it.
Now that I've got all my black in, I'm going to take some of the German gray and highlight the higher points of the black just to kind of soften them up a little bit. Game color black is kind of glossy when it finishes, so I wanted to kind of dull that down a little bit as well as create some distinction between the different colors. Now I'm going to cut 50-50 between German gray and dark sea gray and just do it again, this time trying to get a little bit less so it's just the top and just the highest points of the black that are now being done. Now we're going to shade the entire thing in Carabit Crimson. What that's going to do is just give kind of a red tint to everything. It's going to be really good, especially once the dull coat goes on and gets rid of some of the glossiness that this paint tends to have naturally. And it'll just kind of bring the colors together, make the black a little red, the red a little more red, and the yellow a little bit of red as well. So this way it all kind of looks a little more cohesive when we're done. Now I'm going to go in with my Fistin Red, which is my go-to base red, and I'm going to dry brush in between the smoke cloud clumps. So this way we get to see a little bit more red in this, and we get a little bit of the black red as it touches the red strings. This is completely optional, but I really like it. I think it gives a lot of character to the explosion and the gas trail behind it. So after sitting and looking at this, I decided that the black on Deadpool's suit wasn't as dark as I'd have liked it to have been. So I went with Citadel Contrast Black Temper. What's really cool about the contrast colors is they're basically dark washes. So you can use them in the same way you would use a wash if you just need to strengthen or deepen a color. So for today, what I'm doing is I'm using it to deepen and darken all the blacks. And because it's so thin, and it just tints everything down, even the parts that are highlighted will still look highlighted underneath it. We may need to go in and touch them up a little bit, but we don't have to completely redo them as if we were to completely paint the entire thing German gray again. Speaking of highlights, we're gonna go back in and we're gonna dry brush a little bit more of the deep sea gray bring a little more color to his suit, touch up some of the dark areas just so they're a little brighter and we can see some of that muscle definition a little easier, and just continue to clean up and tidy up. You know, it, it, it's a reoccurring theme for a reason. You know, it's, it's the, really the secret to doing this is do it and then tidy it up. I can't stress that enough. So now we're going to do the base and we do this the exact way we've done all the other bases. Deep sea gray all over the place black rim, blue wash, black wash, call it a day. So with that, all that's left to do is finish the base up. And while we're watching that happen, I just want to say it to everyone, thank you so much for watching. You know, we're trying to bring you useful and entertaining content. It's, you know, it's, it's easy to get frustrated with this hobby, especially when you start. But once you get it down a little bit, there really is almost no feeling quite like the satisfaction of having a vision for what you want this little piece of gray plastic to look like. And then getting to the end of the job, seeing it look better than you even could have imagined. And one of the cool things about Crisis Protocol is having a team and then giving kind of a team dynamic, you know, a piece of base scenery that's the same on all of them, or a rim color, just something that brings them all together and gives them a cohesive look. It really is a magnificent thing to see. Now, if you're in this hobby and you're watching this video and you know, you're looking for ways to improve yourself, it really, all the techniques that I do here are very easy to, to master. It's just a repetition of skill. You'll have them before you know it and your miniatures will be looking better every time you paint. I really hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for stopping in. Enjoy the rest of it. And remember, you can do this too. I believe in you.